Good morning, everyone. Uh, our team is Team Chu. The topic of our project is text-based emotion recognition. The members of our team are Vignesh Danashekhan, Bhavna Lalwani, and myself, Malika Sinha. The goal of our project is detecting feeling based on expression in text. It is scientifically also called as effective computing. Uh, in our project, it refers to the technique for detecting, recognizing, and predicting human emotion with the goal of adapting computational system of these uh, emotion states. For example, uh, I love ice cream. That has to be noted as joy. Uh, the motivation is very clear from the name itself. It has a huge application. We know that emotion governs our daily lives and they are the biggest part of the human experience and they inevitably have an effect on our decision making. So we have a lot of applications from the uh, text analysis like uh, social media improvement in the marketing and employer happiness and integration with the chatbots and many other matrices like happy plant index and the societal well-being metric and many others. So we need a robust text uh, based emotion recognition system. The technical difficulty that we can see is the text analysis is the complexity and the ambiguity of the language, which is critical because it is very difficult for even the human beings to understand sarcasm, the slangs and different languages. So that is obvious. Coming on to the project uh, data analysis, uh, we have analyzed the ICR data set, which is contained uh, 7,466 sentences and uh, for and are distributed uh, equally among the different seven emotions and were discussed fear, guilt, and joy, sadness, and shame. The data was collected on the basis of self-reporting uh, on the participant side. And for further analysis of the data analysis, we have done a zip plot, which describes the uh, highest frequency, which is inversely proportional to the ranking of the pro groups. For creating our baseline, we use the support vector machine. In support vector machine, we use radial basis function kernel. This kernel captures the nonlinearity and also does a good generalization without prior knowledge of the data structure. We use TF-IDF, which is term frequency, inverse document frequency, vectorizer to convert our text input into the feature vectors, which are then given as an input to SVM. On the right side, you can see the decision boundaries of SVM for our training data with seven labels. And then the metric which we use to evaluate our models is F1 score, which was 0 0.567 for our baseline. Moving on to the deep neural network, we first had to prepare our data for the deep neural network layers. So, the for, so first we had to do the pre-processing and the word embedding before we feed to the DNN. So the first part of the pre-processing was tokenization. So here all the unique words from our data were assigned tokens or indexes and maximum number of words here were limited to 20,000 in tokenization. And then these were converted in the text in the document was converted into sequence of tokens, which was later uh, padded. And uh, for padding, we gave maximum sequence length of 200. And this pre-processing input was, uh, the output of pre-processing was given to uh, the word embedding uh, so that the, the output of the word embedding was embedding metrics, which would be then fed to the DNN. So here on our right, we have a high level overview of our architecture for our DNN. We have our input sequences going into the embedding layer. And for embeddings, we use a combination of pre-trained embeddings from GloVe and word to vec The outputs of these embeddings then went into our convolutional layers. And these convolutional layers help us extract some of the spatial information that is present in the text sequences. And finally, these go into our RNN layers, which can handle sequential data. And for our project, we experimented with combinations of LSTM, GRUs, and bilinear versions of both of those. Finally, we send the outputs of the RNNs to the top layers, which is a combination of dropout, fully connected layers. Finally, in our output layer, we have a set of seven neurons to determine our final label. Here we have our model evaluation. 
we compare all of the different combinations of models that we experimented with, LSTM, GRUs, and GLOVE and word to vec and we also trained against unfrozen and frozen word embeddings. We trained each of the models for about 20 epochs, and the model with the best validation loss was selected as a candidate for this evaluation here in this matrix. We see that our best performing model was the word to vec frozen with LSTM, which has an F1 score of 0.607, which is a big improvement over the baseline of 0.567. And in general, we see that LSTMs had performed better than GRUs, and the bilinear LSTM itself in particular had overall the best, most consistent performance across all of our embeddings. Here we see a confusion matrix of our model against the test set for our best model. And we performed best on fear and joy with scores of 0 0.72 and 0 0.7 respectively, and the worst on shame with 0 0.42 accuracy. Our model compared against the baseline in accuracy, F1 precision and recall did better by roughly 7% across the board. So our model was able to see a pretty good improvement over the selected baseline. One other interesting thing we note, if you look at this highlighted row, sadness, the true label, we see that our model confused sadness with guilt and also with anger. And this, we found that this is sometimes hard for humans to distinguish too, sadness and guilt especially. And if, especially if a human is feeling both emotions, it's hard for the model to distinguish those accurately as well. Here we have a very interesting visual insight uh, in the form of a word cloud. In the first word cloud, we can see the words represented from the test data based off the label joy. Whereas in the second word cloud, we see all the test predictions made for the test sentences and incorporated in a word cloud. So summarizing our analysis, the best performing model for our text-based recognition for our data set was the CNN plus LSTM with word to work frozen embeddings. It had approximately 7% increase from the baseline. Overall, we observed that the LSTM performed better than GRU in combination with CNN. The other interesting observation, as Vignesh mentioned, was that the emotional labels were sometimes confused by the model. For example, the sadness was confused with anger or guilt, which is also done by humans at times. And so it will be necessary in future to make a model uh, for, uh, for looking at the multiple emotions. And for that, we will need a more complex model. Thank you.